So we're here at the SID Display Week, and uh, who are you? I'm Avi Sturm. Uh, I'm a senior VP and general manager of the Sensos uh, BU at Tower Jazz. So Tower Jazz, um, what is Tower Jazz? Tower Jazz is a foundry making silicon for customers. So it's not our products. We develop technologies, but we are a specialty foundry focused on analog devices and uh, we have sensors devices, we have RF devices, power management, etc. And so in the sensor, I, I read somewhere on the internet that there was camera sensors that were com coming with your technology, right? Correct. So you're making camera sensors? So, so we are, we're making camera sensors uh, in uh, different types of applications. We are not making camera sensors for cell phones. We do make camera sensors for high-end photography, for cinematography uh, cameras, and also for medical applications and industrial applications. And that's already in the market for a long time or recently? or? already in the market for a very long time. For example, the uh, medical x-ray sensors we sell since 97. 97. So uh, people can make specially custom advanced camera sensors with you? Correct. And they can Correct. try to reach new levels of performance and everything? Yes. And, 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 and that is done by them designing the product and us designing the special pixel per their needs. How does that work? So, are you, where are you based? We are based in Israel. Uh, the fab is there? Uh, no, we have fabs uh, all over the world. We have two fabs in Israel, two fabs in the US, and three fabs in a joint venture with uh, Panasonic. So, how does it compare with like TSMC, for example? So, TSMC are more focused on digital. So, although they do do some analog, but they are more focused on digital. Most of their uh, sales are very deep technology nodes for digital applications. We are, we stay completely away from digital. We are focused on analog. Completely away? Completely away. But like high-end cameras, they want to have digital stuff going yeah, on, Yeah, right? what, what you call digital, this is what we call analog. What you call analog, you call film analog, right? Yeah. But, but analog, uh, we talk about analog electronics. So when we focus on analog electronics, meaning the sensor, the sensor itself is an analog sensor because it collects photons and translates it into voltage, not into one and zeros. The translation later into one and zeros and all the data processing, this is digital. That's a CPU so, somewhere else. Exactly. So, so, so in, in your camera, for example, you have a sensor which is an analog device and you have also a an image processor that is a digital device. And the image processor would do all the, the color perfection, white balance, and things like that. So for many years, I've been writing on the internet, have I, have I been correct or wrong when I say it's a sad state of affairs that people are using smartphones to take baby pictures and wedding photography and all this? And uh, what is special about a real camera sensor? Oh. This is, yeah. a, this is a very good question and, and many people uh, are satisfied with their cell phone camera and well, in, in broad daylight, uh, perfect conditions, they might be right, they get decent pictures, but really if you want a good picture in different conditions, color reproducing, uh, high dynamic range, things like that, there is never a, an impossible. Ability, impossible just because of the pixel size. It's and because the of the size. size. The, yeah. the, the smartphone too small, right? It's smartphone tiny. Is, yeah. It's the, a small it's, it's just that the amount of light that a pixel can collect is much smaller. Never. Even for 10 years in the future. No way. Even 10 years in the future. So you need a little bit of size and you need to uh, uh, do the effort when you have friends or family. Carry something not too small. Maybe you can make the phones bigger also, right? Or How about having a very well, big phone? Yeah, so, so there, are, there are some trends uh, in, in the market. One trend, obviously, is the mirrorless camera. So it's a, it's a DSLR level camera, but without the hassle of the DSLR. So it's a smaller camera. The problem is that usually people who buy those kind of cameras would not satisfy with a with a simple lens. So eventually they buy a very big lens and the size of the camera 
is dictated by the lens, not necessarily by the camera. But this is one a, a way to do it. The other way, still not in the market, but I hear people talking about it, is to have um, an add-on module on your cell phone, so your cell phone becoming the control of your camera. So you don't use the cell phone camera, you use a separate camera, but this separate camera cannot control itself. The cell phone will control the camera. I so saw something from Young Nuo or something like that where it's like a micro four thirds add-on to your phone or something like the micro four thirds sensor for a phone would be great. Yeah. But yeah. it's not happening so far. It's, it's not happening so far. And, and I think it depends on, on market uh, demand. So right now I'm filming this video with a micro four thirds Panasonic camera. What is making this special? Can you say something more about what? If I did a video with the phone, it would be flat. It would be, you wouldn't get the realism. In, in I, I, yeah, yeah, ab absolutely. Especially in, the, in this area that we are in, it's very difficult to get decent uh, colors with a cell phone camera because of the different light con lighting conditions that we have here. You have, for example, your own uh, uh, um, light source just for this. And uh, with, with cell phone, it would, be, uh, it would be very, very difficult to reproduce the real colors in, in this environment. Uh, so what are the rumors and stuff? There's all these camera rumors websites. They talk, uh, they put the word Panasonic and Tower Jazz in the same rumor. Yeah. Is it official something or? Yeah, so, so what's official is that we uh, signed a, a deal with Panasonic in 2000, April 2014 uh, for a joint venture. Actually, Panasonic uh, spun off, off all, their, all of their silicon production facilities and we are just uh, having a joint venture of three production facilities with Panasonic where we hold the majority uh, shares, so we continue the development and obviously our, a major customer of us is Panasonic now because now it's part of the JV and we supply Panasonic, the silicon that they use to produce by themselves. So they already have your sensors uh, made in your fab? They have sensors that are in their cameras? Yes. But, but it's I for cannot, the high-end one, for the very camera? I, 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 I cannot tell you which oh, okay. ones uh, they're using for each camera. So um, potentially it might be uh, a lot of things happening for the future also. But you can't say. I, I cannot say. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to get any. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, isn't uh, my understanding is that Sony is huge with camera sensors, mm -hmm. right? Yes. They have all the way from smartphone to many different camera makers, and I'm guessing also all these camera brands like uh, Nikon and uh, and uh, Panasonic and mm -hmm. lots of other did just buy the sensors from Sony. This is correct. So they're very good with that. Yeah, this is correct. The, the problem is that Sony is also a camera maker. So they also compete with their customers. So it's not a, an easy situation, especially if the, the market grows and there is not enough capacity. So there is a competition on, on supply. And if Sony is also a customer of their own facilities, of their own production, they may give themselves the, the benefit of getting... Advantage. Forget, yeah. Is it possible that some things like what I'm missing in the Panasonic camera, I don't want to get any secrets, right? But what I'm missing is something like face detect autofocus. Mm -hmm. And maybe Sony says, you can't have it. We keep it for our cameras only. You mm -hmm. can get the sensor, but you do your own autofocus. Or something like that, maybe. So, so the, the face detection autofocus is uh, composed from hardware stuff on the sensor itself. So the hardware stuff is basically special pixels as part of the total number of pixels that you have on the sensor. You have special PDAF pixels that are being used for this. And the rest is done by very sophisticated algorithms. So it could be for two different camera vendors that have exactly the same sensor, exactly the same hardware, one would have faster autofocus and the other one not just because they have a better algorithm of it's just an algorithm the data. question it, maybe it's not just but but it could be do yeah. you work with the uh, face detect stuff no no not no, yet no you no. could uh, it's it's not our uh, expertise especially not the software to do that 
Uh, is the face detect pixels are visible or they're just invisible? It, it doesn't affect the image quality, does it? Or? It doesn't affect the image quality. And then um, uh, what I'm looking forward to is 8K. It sounds interesting. Mm -hmm. And I saw Sharp recently. They did an 8K micro four thirds. Mm -hmm. So it definitely it's possible to have a, a 8K in this kind of sensor size all it, the way it, down? Well, it, it is possible. The the only thing is that you pay by pixel area. So going from 4K to 8K, by definition, it would reduce your pixel size or your pixel area by a factor of four. That means less photons that you can collect, less sensitivity, etc. So, so what's the challenge? What's the, what, how do you get to make it usable? You need to make a more light sensitive sensor, four times more light sensitive? to add four times more pixels? Or, 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 or you settle with what you have. So for example, you, you know, just as an example, if you look at the Sony Alpha 7 a, a series, you have the R and you have the S, right? Different resolution. Each one has its uh, advantages and disadvantages. The R would give you very high resolution. The S would give you much higher sensitivity because of the larger pixels. Is it correct that the sensor technology is the like what you're doing is way more advanced than the chipsets? So sometimes you do just too much and the chip cannot keep up. So they have to use FPGAs and all this stuff to try to keep up, or, or is it not true? Um, each each uh, area has its own difficulties and its own expertise. But one thing I can tell you for sure that in order to get very very good pictures. No a, a data processor, no, no image processor, as good as it will be, would cover up for lousy sensor. They do all this, uh, psych uh, they do this, uh, what you call it, uh, processing of images and stuff, which is impressive a little bit, but it's fake, right? Yeah. It's nothing as good as real optics. That, that's, that, that's correct, and, and, and that, that's exactly what, when you start with a good image, then Obviously, when you do some corrections, and, and you know, uh, uh, photographers uh, use uh, Photoshop on, on their pictures. It's not uh, something that you is unheard of. But you must start with a good image. So are uh, you looking forward to the future? There's amazing things happening, Absolutely. like in your industry. Yeah. It's just going to, for example, 8K and all this stuff is uh, a lot well, of interest. What yeah. else is cool? So, so what is cool is 8K for sure a higher frame rate for sure uh, but i think the most important part is the high dynamic range which is still a a problem that even with the high-end dslr cameras you still look at pictures you take pictures and you still suffer from low dynamic range or lower dynamic range that you would expect i saw some displays at the trade show there's 10,000 nits but there was also 1,000 nits or something like that and you need a better dynamic range camera to capture realistic HDR, right? Absolutely. And this is a big challenge for you. Or yeah. you, This is part of what you do. Yeah. yeah. And you provide these tools so the, so the, ch the designers can use your tools as like, uh, you know, the whole, what do you call it? The, uh, it's basically software and stuff, right? To use your fab to the max. Yeah, but the, the use, uh, we call it PDK. It's the process design kit for the designer to design using our uh, best-in-class process parameters. But in addition, we do uh, changes to the process for the customer needs in order to perfect the performance of the pixels. Cool, all right, uh, thanks a lot. So I'm looking forward to those 8K cameras for my Great. next camera. Okay, thanks sure. a lot. Sure, thank you.